Hi everyone, my name is Miss Mo, and I'm recording today in the city of New Westminster, which is on the unceded and unsurrendered land of the Hakalam speaking people. I will review with you about fibers, the step by steps of how to spin yarn, and the techniques of Z twist and an S twist. Did you know that your hair can be used as fiber for thread? Fibers come in many forms to create yarn or thread. You can use dog hair, cat hair, but most people usually use sheep, llama, or apalka wool to make yarn. I think rabbit hair is the most soft, but until fibers are twisted, they are just fiber and not yarn or thread. Why do you think fibers need to be spun? Well, if they aren't spun, they'll fall apart. So here, I have some unspun yarn. If I just pull gently, they will actually fall apart. I have one that is spun and if I pull and tug it's pretty strong. So that's why you need to spin your 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 yarn so that they don't fall apart like this. So today we will learn how to spin yarn. The technique of spinning has been f used for many years since the Viking days. Women were the spinners and men were the knitters. So first of all, you'll need a strop spindle. spindle. So I have one here and it's made out of a wooden dowel. It's about a one inch uh, wooden wheel with a hook on top. You can see that. You can also see I have rubber bands on both ends. So it just stops the, the wheel from moving. It's just in place. So you create a triangle with your thumb and index finger and one point of the triangle with your left thumb. So the leader thread will go around the spindle so that your thumb and your index finger grabs the point of the triangle so that you can pull it through. This creates a start of your spin for your spinning of your fiber. Once you have your leader in place at the top, you're turning the lead leader towards you. So it's clockwise. You're turning your spin spindle towards you so that you're going the same direction. And then as you're doing that, you're spinning your leader towards you so that it becomes a Z twist. So you're twist you're going to be twisting your your fibers like this. Once you've done that, you now take your wool. So this is my wool that's not spun. You can tell that it's not spun because yeah, you can, it's pretty stringy. There's the fibers. It's pretty um, soft and it's not spun at all. So this is called drafting. Now I've taken a little bit and how thin that is compared to this one over here. This is pretty thick. So when it's this thin, see how fibers can easily fall if they're not spun? So I've taken that. I'm going to put my thin draft a little bit of wool. And I'm going to put it towards the leader, like, like this. Okay. And I'm going to spin a little bit so that the that wool is now embedded in the leader. So I'm gonna take a little bit more. I'm gonna pull. Now you take your wool fiber and pre-draft your fiber, which means to pull your fiber a little to thin out your fiber. You don't want a large chunk of fiber or your yarn will be really thick. You can see these fibers are spun to thin strands. You want to pinch at the top so the rest of the fibers does not spin. You can see the fibers are twisting and onto the leader. I then stop the spindle ensuring it does not unwind. You then unwrap the leader and turn the spindle to gather the yarn. Spin a little bit more and the next technique is called the park and draft. Put the spindle between your knees and pinch where you pinched before and pull the fiber so you get a little bit of fiber to spin again. You repeat this process. 
When you're finished spinning and you have enough spun yarn, you can connect two spun yarn, which becomes a two ply. So here I have the gray and the red, you can see. I've had one spun one direction, which is the Z, Z yarn. And now once you you would go counterclockwise, then this becomes an S twist. You can see like there's a twist. This allows the yarn to be a little stronger. Okay, and perhaps you can add the colors, um, change the colors to the, the pattern or yarn that you would want. Once you've finished spinning, you can now knit, weave, or use your yarn for various projects.